Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusor Education. Um, continuing the combinatorics topics. Uh, today's uh, lecture is about simple permutation problems. Um, they are really simple. Um, I, I do strongly recommend you to, uh, if you didn't do it uh, before, to go to unizor.com website where this lecture is presented with notes and all the problems which I'm going to solve right now are presented among these notes with actually logic uh, to, to, to solve it um, and uh, I recommend you to try to solve all these problems just yourself don't read the solution uh, which is also presented um, but only after that it makes sense actually to listen again to uh, to the lecture compare your uh, solution to whatever I'm presenting here um, because the whole thing is actually aimed as, as as a tool to develop your logic so this is all about logic combinatorics is very logical thing so uh, I, I recommend you to do it yourself first and then go to the lecture all right so let's just uh, do one by one I have six problems to discuss they are really simple so Yes, and one more um, uh, a statement which I would like to make. Um, don't try to remember the formulas of the combinatorics. Probably the only formula which you really might remember is the number of permutation of n different objects is n factorial. It's simple, it's like it goes immediately um, into your mind. But everything else, the number of uh, combinations with repetition, without repetitions, all logically derived from this, from this one and only formula about number of permutations, which is n factorial. So, what you have to remember is not the formula, but the logic which leads to any formula uh, of, of the combinatorics. So, that's very important, and that's why I'm not really using any formula here, like calculate. Uh, how many uh, different combinations from uh, 5 by, by, by 2 or something like this. I'm not asking about all these calculations of the formulas. What uh, I am presenting is logic behind the solution and that's very important. So forget the formulas. Now three digits numbers, okay how many different three digits uh, three digit numbers are between 500 and 799 inclusive so both ends are included all right well let's just think about it all these numbers start with either 5 or 6 or 7 so for the choice of the first digit of our three digit number we have three different choices now Everything else actually is not fixed, which means any other um, place can have any other digit. Uh, zero, zero, or five, three, or, or nine, nine, or whatever it is. So all other combinations are valid. And how many combinations we have? We have from zero to nine as the second digit, and from zero to nine as the third digit. So our choice is among all these numbers which have three choices for the first digit, n ten choices for the second, and ten choices for the third. So all together it makes three times ten times ten. Different choices, different three-digit numbers which are among these. Well, you can obviously say that hell, it's very uh, simple to calculate because if you need all the numbers between this and this, you have to subtract from 800, uh, 500, because this is inclusive on, most, but on both ends, so you have to subtract from 500, 800, and you will get 300, which is exactly the same as this one. Yes, obviously you are right. And the purpose of this particular problem was not deriva derivation of the number 300, which is kind of obvious from the subtraction thing, but to present the logic how to derive it combinatorically. And that was the only purpose of this problem. Okay, now the second problem. Exactly the same problem, but I'm interested only in, uh, in even numbers. Uh, 
again, from the general considerations, you can say that the even numbers uh, are basically half of whatever we have here, right? Uh, so if all together I have 300, the first one is even, the last one is odd, so basically we can break them into pairs and each pair contains even, odd, even, odd. So half of this, it's supposed to be 150, right? Half of the 300. But let's check if we can um, derive this particular number combinatorically. Now, what is the main characterization of the even number? Well, it's the last digit which is supposed to be even, right? So, if the number ends with 0, 2, or 4, or eight, uh, 6, or 8, it's even. I'm talking about only the, the last digit. Everything else is really ir irrelevant, right? So, for the third digit, we have, in case we are looking for even number, 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8, which is five different choices. Which means in here, I have to have by 5, which is obviously equal to 150. So we can derive exactly the same 150 using a purely combinatorial considerations. Three choices for the first uh, digit, 10 choices for the second, and 5 choices for the last, the third digit. And we get the, uh, 150. All right, that's the second problem. Let's move on. Third problem. Okay, let's consider you have 52 cards, regular deck of cards. Um, now, uh, well, let's say you are a poker player, which means you are looking for number 21. Well, um, there is a famous um, <laughs> literary work, um, which is called um, the Queen of Spades in Russian literature and uh, so there was a guy, a gambler who was looking for a combination 3, 7 and Ace so he got 3, he got 7 and then instead of Ace he's got the Queen of Spades and that basically the whole fabula of this particular liter literary work so, but let's think about uh, the combination 3, 7, and Ace. My question is, let's say we shuffle the cards, and then the first three cards are 3, 7, and Ace in this particular order. My, so, so, so the question is, how many different combinations of 3, 7, and Ace uh, as the first three cards in this order exists when you shuffle the cards, when you shuffle the deck of cards. Well, let's just think about it. For the first card, which is supposed to be three, I have three choices. Uh, sorry, four choices. Four choices are um, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades, right? So we have four different trees. Three of hearts, three of spades, etc. Now, Next is, uh, I, I, I need the seven, and there are also four sevens. Again, seven of clubs, of diamonds, of hearts, and of spades. So I have to multiply it by four. So I have four choices for the first card, four choices for the second card, and four choices for the ace. Because again, there are four different aces. Now, all other cards can be in any order, I don't really care. And all these permutations of other cards, now I have 3 out of 52, I fixed, so the rest is 49. So all other 49 cards can be in any order, so I have to multiply it by 49 factorial. That's the only formula and factorial which I am encourage you to remember. Alright, so the total number of different um, uh, di different card decks actually when the top three are three seven and ace are this number whatever this number is it's a very big number actually all right um, so again four choices for the first four choices for the second four choices for the third and 49 factorial for everything else
that's the total number of different permutations of deck when the first three cards are 3, 7, and ace. Next problem. Next problem, we have 10 participants in some um, uh, competition. Now, this competition has a gold and silver and a bronze medals. All right, so my question is, out of 10, out of 10 different participants in the competition, well, the results can be obviously different. Different people can take different places. So my question is, how many different results of the entire competition um, are possible when we are um, um, fixing the first three places? How many different results of the of the medal distribution? Let's say, yeah, that that's a proper way. How many different medal rest the distributions among 10 people exist right so again it's just the number of choices how many choices do we have for the gold medal well it can be any other of 10 uh, any uh, any part participant in the competition out of 10 now when this is chosen when the gold medal is chosen there is only nine uh, participants which can get the silver medal and after silver medal is assigned, we have eight people to get uh, eight choices actually for for the bronze medal. So basically, what I'm saying is that this is 720 different ways how three medals can be distributed among ten uh, participants. So basically, um, you can um, envision it in the following model. Let's say you have 10 participants, so you put them into order. Number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, etc. So how many different permutations, uh, how, how many different ordering uh, we, we can have from uh, 10 people? Well, obviously 10 factorial, right? Now, but the first three are fixed. So no matter how these guys are uh, permuted, the first three will have exactly the same medals and uh, it's, it's the same distribution, right? So I have to uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, right? So I have to divide it by 7 factorial, which is exactly the same as this, because 10 factorial is uh, the product of all numbers from 10 to 1, and this is from 7 to 1. So whatever is reduced, and 10, 9, and 8 remaining. So that's another kind of consideration. So you have 10 factorial, but we have to divide by 7 factorial because any permutation among these non-metal receivers is basically producing the same um, distribution of metals among, among the participants. So that's the answer. Next. Um, oh yes, by the way, this is a typical example of partial uh, permutations because we are permuting only the three out of ten in some order. All right, um, we have rows of flowers. We have twenty different rows of flowers. Okay, so you are a gardener and you have 20 different rows where you have to put flowers. Your task is to put the same number of flowers um, uh, in every uh, row um, and uh, you would like to have all rows different. So if one row contains flowers like A, B, C, D and E Another flow, uh, an, another row uh, should contain um, these numbers, th these flowers in some different order. So that that's the purpose. The purpose is to have all twenty rows different. So no two uh, uh, no two rows are identical. Question is, how many different flowers, types of flowers, or bushes or whatever you call, it, how many types of flowers you should buy 
to satisfy this demand? Well, let's just consider one. Is one sufficient? No, obviously, because if you put one the same to all 20, it will be all, all, all 20 identical. Next, if you have two, so you have two types of flowers. Well, you can put one flower and then the next flower onto the first row. Now, you would like the second row to be different, so you can probably put the second type on the first place and the first type on the second place. Then the third row com comes and you're out of choices. There are no more choices. It's either number one, number two, or number two, number one. That's it. So again, question is how many at minimum um, of different types of flowers you need to basically make these rows different. Well, let's just think about it. It's, it's really simple. If you have n flower, uh, different types of flowers, n different types of flowers, you can position them in n factorial different ways, right? Because this is the permutations. So our purpose is to buy n as small as possible but such that n factorial should be greater or equal to the 20 rows which we have, right? So 1 and 2 are definitely too small. 3 factorial is 6, which is to, uh, too small. 4 factorial, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times uh, 4, which is 24. Well, that covers it. So if you have four types of flowers, you can position them in different orders, and there are 24 different orders, which is sufficient to, uh, to make 20 rows of four flowers each, of four types of flowers each, to make them all different. All right? So basically what I'm talking about, you have A, B, C, D, you have A, C, B, D, etc., etc. All the different combinations, they will be all different, and there are 24 different combinations. And these are different types of flowers which you can put. Yeah. So the answer is four. Okay. Okay, it's another typical partial permutation problem. Let's say you're graduating from the med school. Um, and uh, you have to have hospital where you will go through your residency pro pro program. Now, let's assume there is a certain agency. You submit your documents uh, to this agency and they are helping you to find the place um, for your residency. Now, the agency is uh, in charge of 20 different hospitals. Now, you are supposed to say which is your number one hospital, your choice, and which is your number two hospital. So you have to make two main choices. Now, the question is, obviously, how many different partial permutations, if you wish, how many different choices of number one and number two hospitals you can make out of 20? Again, it's a typical uh, partial permutation problem. And again, the, uh, the typical logical consideration is for the hospital number one, you have 20 different choices. And for the hospital number two, you have obviously 19 different choices. So that should be the answer. Now, a different approach can be, okay, I'll put all my 20 hospitals in a row from the first to the twenties. Now, there are 20 factorial different ways of putting my 20 hospitals in some order. And I cut the first two. This is number one, this is number two. All right? Now, permutations among these 18 is absolutely irrelevant, which means I have to divide the total number of permutations by these to get the number which is exactly the same as this one to get the number uh, of permutations I'm, I'm looking for. So that's the result. And this is my last problem. Um, what I would suggest if you didn't do it before, go to the Unisor again, 
to the website, to this particular lecture, and read the notes. Um, try not to read the solutions, which are presented there as well, just the, uh, the problems themselves, and again, try to come up with some uh, your own solution, and then check against the, the answer which is presented there as well. Obviously, I, I, I always suggest you to, um, to go to the website and uh, sign in as, uh, as a student. Uh, you need a supervisor or a parent who will be in charge of your educational process because that would allow you to take exams and would allow your parent or supervisor to basically make a, a, a judgment and yourself actually to make a judgment on, uh, on how well you progress in your education. Um, and again, don't forget that uh, all these problems and uh, the logical considerations, etc., they are not something which you exactly need in your, will need in your practical life in the future. These are all exercises for your mind. Just to develop your brain as much as physical exercises in the gym help you to develop your muscles. So that's the proper um, uh, attitude, I would say, um, towards problems like these. Um, so hopefully you're not gamblers, for instance, you're not facing the difficult calculations of uh, card combinations, etc. Uh, it's only to develop your logical and analytical abilities. Thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>